Now, just like pretty much with any other expensive product, uh, Apple iPhones have two kinds of reactions from people. Either you're a fan of them or not so much. But no matter which group you fall into, you have to admit that uh, Apple has been doing some pretty amazing stuff with their CPUs over the past couple of years. Now that begs the question, despite existing in the same time frame as other uh, chip manufacturers, how is it that their mobile processors are uh, drastically more powerful than the competition? Now just having a more powerful processor doesn't make it a better phone, but the raw horsepower can even match a small scale laptop which is impressive to say the least. So in this video let's try to understand why Apple CPUs are um, that much higher performance compared to their Android counterparts. The first and probably the main reason is that Apple makes these CPUs only for their phones. Every other major chip maker out there, they make their CPUs for a wide range of applications. So say a Qualcomm CPU with the right kind of architecture could power a refrigerator or even your phone. But Apple doesn't have to do that. Since they only make their chips to suit their phones, they can go crazy as long as their budget and R&D supports it. And let's be honest, I don't think they're gonna run out of budget anytime soon. Ever since they introduced the first ever 64-bit mobile processor back in uh, the iPhone 5s days in 2013, they have been ahead of the competition by that much. And of course, once they get started, they don't have any reason to look back. And the second reason for the sheer amount of high performance that you see is the chip size. Well, there are many different parameters that kind of decide the CPU's performance, but basically, the bigger the CPU is, the more will be its performance. And Apple's chips are almost twice as large as the Android counterparts, and that basically comes down to their business model. You see, Apple, unlike other chip makers, don't have to worry about making profits from their chips. Since they are not selling their chips to other manufacturers to make a profit like Qualcomm or ARM does, they can pretty much go crazy with the budget and make a really expensive huge chip which uh, delivers a lot of performance. And as I said before, since they are only catering it to their phone, and also since they make their own software, they can really integrate it well. Now it's not that uh, companies like MediaTek or Qualcomm cannot make giant chips, they can. But since they are primarily chip makers, they have to draw a line somewhere uh, after which the chip becomes far too expensive for companies to buy. That's primarily the main reason why companies like Huawei or Samsung decided to make their own chips. Well, Samsung still has a Qualcomm counterpart, but uh, they are trying to save money by their own in-house Exynos chip in certain markets like India or Europe. But Apple has already had a head start in front of all of these, so um, they will always remain 2-3 uh, to three years ahead, at least for the time being. Now since Apple has complete flexibility over their architecture, it also allows them to have a higher performance cache. A cache memory is basically an intermediate memory which is faster than your RAM, so it stores some information that's required for the CPU. The more cache you have, the faster your CPU will run. So it's typical that an uh, ARM-based architecture would have 1 or 2 MB of cache, but um, Apple's chipsets usually have 4 or 8 MB of cache. Again, it's really expensive, but they don't have to worry about it because they make their profits from a whole range of products, chipsets not being one of them. And yeah, everyone likes to criticize Apple for their high price tags, but um, if you make a counterpart in Android side uh, which matches them in performance, that phone would probably end up being 2 to 3 times more expensive, mainly because there are so many players involved. First, ARM would decide an architecture and they would want their profit margin, which they would sell to a company like Qualcomm or MediaTek who would design a chip and they would want their profit margin, which will come down to the company who makes the phone and they'll design their own chips and their own software and they'll look for a profit margin. You can see where I'm going. All this ends up coming out of the customer's pocket, which ends up in a pretty hefty price tag. So in order to keep the prices low or at least as competitive, the companies will have to compromise on uh, their basic architecture itself. And that's exactly why Google has been a big advocate for software over hardware. They keep the hardware as it is and control everything in their software because that is the one thing they make, Google Android. But it's not like Apple will always remain the undisputed king of performance. As technology gets better, uh, more components will be available for cheaper and companies like uh, Qualcomm and others can make profits easily. Then the gap will be drastically reduced and in fact it has been reducing over the past couple of years. Now Huawei, uh, depending on when you're watching this video, has announced or has already released a 5 nanometer based architecture for their processor. Now a nanometer basically indicates how small an individual component is on the CPU, which basically translates to its efficiency. The smaller the number, the more power efficient in the sense the lesser power the CPU would demand. Meaning that you will get the same high performance without compromising the device's battery life too much. And not to mention Android has also gotten extremely good at uh, resource management. It's not the same memory hog that it used to be 5 years ago. 
It's gotten so good in fact that I cannot distinguish the performance too much between a 2 year old phone versus a modern day phone running the same Android software. Android has gotten really good at adapting to different hardware combinations and running smoothly no matter what they are. And that's something Apple hasn't done in years. With Apple, well, you pretty much get what you get. Now, there's no option to select any different set of hardware running same iOS because only one company makes that software. And you have to pick between the storage variants that they give. And that's all. Some people won't mind because uh, as long as the phone runs fine and all of their tasks are done, uh, it doesn't matter. And I agree with that idea. But if you ask me, the only real way of knowing how much of your money's value you're getting is by looking over at the competition. Well, those were the main reasons why Apple chips have been delivering higher performance than their counterparts, at least on paper. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and uh, if you'd like to see any more videos like this, drop your suggestions there as well. I'll see you next time. Cheers.